Ladies and gentlemen, we want to welcome you again at Kingdom Life Ministries International. Dr. T.S. Mligwe here saying welcome, welcome, welcome to this great Sunday morning where we are going to study the word and, and hear what God is saying to us today as we continue teaching along the lines of faith in God. As we have been studying the last few Sundays that it is according to your faith, it is according to your faith. So today I want to talk a little bit differently, but in the same vein as it's talking about the subject of my talk is God is our source of all. God is our source of all things. But we're going to take the section of healing, and then the other Sundays, God willing, will take the other things to show you that everything that we need is in God. In Mark 11, Mark 11, verse 22, the Bible says, and Jesus answered and said unto them, Have faith in God. Have faith in God. Have faith in God. Now listen very carefully. There's a reason why Jesus said we must have our faith in God. It is not right to have faith in a man. It is not right to have faith in, 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 in a particular bishop, a particular apostle, a particular evangelist, a particular prophet, or, or a particular pastor, or a particular somebody, men or women. Jesus says, you want a miracle? Have faith in God. And I'm going to prove it to you why. We must have faith in God if we need a miracle. What's a miracle? A miracle is something that scientifically you can explain it. Okay, scientifically you can't explain it, but it has happened. It's right there in front of you. You can't tell scientifically how it has happened. That's a miracle. And only God can perform a miracle, and I'm going to prove it to you. So Jesus said, ladies and gentlemen, have faith in God. Have faith in God. Why? Because God cannot fail. God cannot fail. The Bible says he watches over his word to perform it. So whatever God has promised, if you got faith in that word of God, which means you're behaving faith in God, God is obliged to perform it. God is obliged to perform it if you got faith in him and his word. Now watch this. The apostles were, were declared or commanded by the Lord Jesus in, in Matthew, uh, in Mark chapter 16. Jesus said, verse 15, go into the whole world. Preach the gospel to every creature. Now, that was a command which we call a commission today. He says, go into the whole world. Preach the gospel to all creatures. Okay? So the Bible says in verse 20, And they, who are the they? Those who were sent. Those who were commanded to go. That's the apostles. They, what did they do? They went. They went forth. They went forth and preached everywhere. The Lord working. The Lord working, the Lord working with them, them who? The apostles. And confirming, ladies and gentlemen, confirming the word with signs following. With signs, miracles, and wonders following the preaching of the word. Ladies and gentlemen, why would the word, I mean miracles, why would the miracles follow the preaching of the word? Why? Why, doesn't, why don't miracles precede the preaching of the word? Because Romans 10, 17 says, Faith cometh by hearing and hearing the word of God. So they started by preaching. Why? So that people can hear the word. Why? So that faith will be born. Faith will emanate. Faith will rise in their heart to believe God. To believe God. To have faith in God. Faith will rise when the preacher is preaching the gospel. It's preaching the word. Faith will run, will rise because the faith is a product of the word. Faith is a product of the word. That is why it, it comes or it gets born again or it manifests as you hear the word and hear the word and hear the word and hear the word. Of course, talking about the word, which is talking about miracles, signs and wonders and the fact that God and with God, there's nothing impossible. Are you hearing what I'm saying? When, 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 when you're studying the word, you're hearing the word of miracles and signs and wonders and amazing things that God is able to do because he's 
omnipotent. He's all powerful. He can do anything anytime he likes, anytime he wants. He can do anything. So when you got faith in this God who can do anything anytime to anybody, anywhere, anyhow, he, he, you, 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 you definitely are going to get your miracle. So the Bible says the apostles went preaching the word, number one. Number two, people receiving the word and faith was born in their hearts and signs and wonders Jesus could do. Why? Because Jesus or God himself responds to faith. When God sees faith in a person, whoever they are, child or adult, when he sees faith, he responds to it. He responds to it. Listen to this. Apostles did not go, went everywhere, and Jesus, the Bible says, went with them, confirming the preached word with signs, wonders, and miracles. Let us go to Acts chapter 14. In Acts chapter 14, let's read verse 4. Or let me read from verse 1 so that you hear it. And it came to pass in Iconium that they, that's Paul and Barnabas, went uh, both together into the synagogue of the Jews, and so spake or preached that a great multitude, both of the Jews and also of the Greeks or the non-Jews, believed. All right? But the unbelieving Jews stirred up the Gentiles and made their minds evil, affected against the, the brethren, that is Paul and Barnabas, uh, and the other Christians. Verse 3, long time therefore abode they, Paul and Barnabas, speaking boldly in the Lord, which gave, you see, they were speaking boldly, they were preaching boldly, right? Which gave testimony unto the word of his grace, and granted signs and wonders to be done by their hands. And God, and God, and God gave them the grace. Gave them the grace. Who? Paul and Barnabas. He granted them the grace so that through them, he, God could do signs, wonders, and miracles by their hands. Glory to God. So, we see this thing is going. It is the preaching of the word. And then the miracles happen. Now I've already explained why the preceding of the word, the preaching of the word must precede the, the miracle. Because faith cometh by hearing. And if somebody doesn't hear, it's very difficult for them to have a faith for a miracle. Let's look at chapter 15. In chapter 15 verse 12, the Bible says, Then all the multitude, when Paul and Barnabas were preaching, kept silence and gave audience, or they listened to Barnabas and Paul declaring what miracles and wonders God had wrought among the Gentiles by them. Glory to God. So God wrought, God did miracles through Barnabas and Paul because they were the instruments that he could use available to his ministry. Are you listening? Are you hearing this? So it, it is the preaching of the word. And the people receiving the word. And God is seeing faith in their hearts born by the word. Which has been received. Then he responds. He responds. He responds. God responds by performing miracles that people are believing for. Signs that people are believing for. Everything that, like I showed you in chapter 14, the very chapter 14, that, we, that there was a man born a cripple. But the Bible says he was listening to Paul. And Paul, by the revelation of the Holy Spirit, could see that the man had faith to be healed. And Paul shouted, stand up right on thy feet. And the man rose and he walked. It was all a matter of God, not Paul, not Barnabas, but Paul, I mean, but God did the miracles that we, I, I'm trying to emphasize that you and I must have faith in God for signs, wonders, and miracles. Those things that are inexplicable, only God can do. Let's look at chapter 19. Chapter 19, verse 11. The Bible says, and God wrought or did special, special miracles by the hands of Paul. God, but God, not Paul, but God wrought special, special miracles. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you this. There are miracles are not the same. They are not even equal. There are bigger miracles and smaller miracles. 
I mean, if I pray for you, you've got a headache and it stops. It's a miracle, but it's a small one. But then the Bible says, through the hands of Paul, God wrought special, special, special miracles. Special. Hmm. How does a cripple jump? And all of a sudden, before he lands on the, on the ground, feet appear. That's a special miracle. That's a special miracle. It's a special miracle. Now, we have seen special miracles as we served God in this very ministry where we are. We have seen special miracles right here in this place before all these buildings that you see in this place when it was just dusty and, and, and there were no chairs and there were no offices, there were no buildings, nothing. But God is not impressed by buildings and so on. They are good, it's okay if, if you are able, but that's not the issue. That's not the issue. The issue is faith in God. So, God did special miracles. Now, we have seen special miracles. And I've shared some of you, some of those miracles with you. Like the miracle that when we started here, there was no building, there was nothing. And God said, have Sunday evening services. And I said, Lord, but what about the rain? He said, stop it. Pray like Elijah, because he was a man just like you. With ordinary, ordinary humanness like you. Speak to the rain if you believe. And I spoke to the rain, and for three years, there was no rain in this area, Chifranani, for three years on Sunday evening. You can, even the sinners around here, the non-believers, they know it. They saw it. We saw it. That's what, that was something special. So God can do special miracles like he did through the hands of Paul. Let's look at the book of, of, of Hebrews, chapter 2. In Hebrews chapter 2, verse 4, the Bible says, God also... Okay, let me read from verse 3. How shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation, which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord, and was confirmed unto us by them that heard him, that is the apostles. God also, God also, ladies and gentlemen, God, God, God also, bearing them witness, both with signs and wonders, and with great diverse miracles, and gifts of the Holy Spirit, According to his own will. Now, ladies and gentlemen, God, the Bible says, he did great miracles through them. Them who? Them, the apostles who went about preaching the gospel. So, friends, I'm trying something here. I'm trying to direct your faith away from a bishop, from a pastor like me, from an evangelist, from a, a somebody called prophet or whoever, that you put our faith in God. Because the Bible says there's nothing impossible with God. So when my faith is in God, and when God sees my faith, he responds to it according to how I believe. That's why we were sharing the last few Sundays that the topic was according to your faith. It is according to your faith. Now, friends, who are we? We that are preaching the gospel. We are just instruments, my friends. We are not the source of miracles. Even if God was to use me to do amazing things, like I've seen amazing things, it doesn't mean it's me doing it. I've showed you, the Bible says, any, 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 anything in the Bible is proved by the witness of two to three witnesses. But here I've read you several more than three scriptures that are saying it is God who does miracles. That's why Jesus said, have faith in God. Because God never changes. According to Malachi chapter 3 verse 6, the Bible says, I am the Lord, I change not. And the Bible says in Hebrews, Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So if Jesus went with the apostles, confirming the word they preach with signs, wonders, and miracles, he can do the same with me because he doesn't change. Oh, pastor, but you know, uh, miracles have uh, uh, passed on with the apostles. I don't know that scripture. I've never seen that in my different Bibles. All I know is that miracles are still here. It's only that modern man maybe is failing to believe because we've got other scientific things that we are trusting. I've seen it when we preach in places that are developed in the first world, in, in overseas, in the first world, because there they've got advanced scientific things that have developed which are not necessarily satanic or diabolical or something sinful. But unfortunately, people transfer their faith from God to things. But let, let me tell you this, scientific things can be wonderful, but they are limited. But our God is unlimited. So it is better to have faith in God because God can do anything, anytime, anywhere, anyhow, with anybody, for anybody, every, anyhow. Because he is unlimited. He is God Almighty, the Bible says. 
So who are we? We're just an instrument. Let me prove it to you. Two more scriptures. In Acts chapter 2. Alright? In Acts chapter 2, the Bible says, in verse 43, and fear, okay, let me start from verse 42, and they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine, that is the church, and fellowship, and breaking of bread and prayers. Okay, that is the church, right? Verse 43, and fear came upon every soul. Why? And many miracles, many wonders, and signs were done by the apostles. Now, friends, this is not confusing. Don't be confused. Don't say, but the Bible says it is the apostles. No, 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 no. It is the apostles. Yes, we see them in front, but behind the source of the apostles that is giving them the grace to do those things is God. So we as human beings, don't, 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 don't take it. If I start to say, come to me, I will heal you and all that. I'm just saying so. I'm not the healer. I cannot heal. Not even a, a headache of a mosquito. But God Almighty, he can do anything. He can do anything. So the Bible says, the apostles, we see the apostles, but we know the source of this grace, the source of this power to perform miracles by the hands of the apostles, it was God. Okay? We also see that in Acts chapter 5, that was Acts chapter 2, Acts chapter 5 verse 12, the Bible says, and by the hands of the apostles were many signs and wonders wrought among the people and they were all with the when one accord in Solomon's porch. So by the hands of the apostles, many miracles were wrought. Wrought by who? God. God. It's now very clear. It's God. So I want to say to you, friends, if you hear somebody says he can perform miracles, he can do miracles, run away. Run away from such. Because the Bible, this very Bible, if you really want a genuine miracle, it must be from God. It must be God. Listen to this. Jesus says in John chapter 10, he said, hey, I, the son of man, can do nothing by myself. He says, everything you see me do, I see my father do, and I do it. I hear my father say it, and I say it. So Jesus says, every miracle he did. It was through his father's grace. It was the grace of God upon him as the son of God and God the son. He says it was my father doing it. Now if Jesus also said it was his father doing miracles. Who can tell me among the humans who were first sinners before they got saved. Can tell me that they did miracles when Jesus said he couldn't do miracles by himself. He said it is my father doing it. Glory to God. So in closure. Friends, let's have faith in God. We shall see amazing things. Anybody who says miracles are over, I don't know where they got that from, but I, I, I suspect they got it from the devil. Because the devil would want you to believe that signs and miracles are no more. Let's put our faith in signs and so on, and never God. And that's where we miss it. That's why indeed, God cannot force a miracle in your life if you don't believe for it. A little girl was playing with other little girl. Let me tell you, tell you this testimony. They were playing like kids, you know, they play anyhow with anything. So one of them picked up a rusted old nail and play flew through it to a friend. Unfortunately, the nail landed in the eye and pierced through. And the child screamed. And they were playing outside by the gate and the mother could hear that that scream, it's not a playful scream. That's, that, that's my baby. That's my baby. I don't know how women know, uh, recognize the, the tone of the voices of their kids. Even if there are many kids, she could pick up, that's my baby. So she ran out of the kitchen only to see her daughter coming, running with her hands lifted and in terrible fear and screaming and the nail was hanging there. And then by the time the little girl arrived at the mother, the mother saw the nail drop off from the eye, listen to this, and the liquid in the eye also followed. What does it mean scientifically? It means the eye is dead. There's nothing that such can do anymore. Now watch this. The, the child started to cry, Mommy, call Pastor so-and-so to come and pray for me, for my dead eye to see. Why? Because this kid had seen a lot of miracles in her church where she was fellowshipping with her mom. When the pastor was used by God to do amazing miracles. So she started to call upon the, 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 the pastor. But the mother was thinking hospital. 
hospital. So she quickly grabbed the kid, threw him in the car, started the vehicle. She was running to the hospital. When she arrived, they could see the fear, the anxiety in the mother, and they quickly helped her, took her, called the doctor. The doctor said, theater. So they ran down to the theater. When they got, the little girl was reciting one thing, call pastor so-and-so to come and pray for me so that my eyes shall see again. Call, and she was just saying one thing, but crying. And by the time they go to the theater, the doctors could hear what the big little girl was saying. And then she, the, the doctors asked the mother, hey, what, what, what did she say? She said, no, she, she says we must call our pastor to come and pray for her. Only then will she receive a miracle. She will be able to see. The doctors were laughing at the little girl, but the little girl was not laughing. She kept on repeating it until they said, all right, call the, that, that pastor. They called the pastor. Fortunately, he stayed not very far from the hospital. He quickly came. He was told the story. This little girl believes that when you can, you can pray for her, a miracle will happen. And they had put a cotton wool over there with a cello tape on top to just to keep the eye, you know, from all kinds of things. And then when, when, when the pastor came, he said to the doctors and the nurses, get out of there. Get out of the theater. They said, no, you can't do that. You don't work here. We work here. It is you who are not supposed to be here in the first place. He said, get out. And you're wondering, why did he do that? He was imitating Jesus. When he got to Jairus' house, when Jairus' daughter was dead, what did Jesus do? He changed everybody. He said only the mother and the father should remain. Everybody, all the aunts, the uncles, the neighbors, the what, what, they said, get out. He threw them out and he remained with the father and the mother and the three disciples. And he touched the girl and said, Talita, come. Which means little girl, I say, rise. And she rose. Listen. This pastor chased the doctors out. The doctors went out, and when they were out, they were pacing the floor. I mean, they were anxious, man, that guy will become septic. Man, this guy, who, is, who does he think he is and everything, you know, and all that, and all that, and all that. And the man of God looked at the little girl and said, do you believe that Jesus can restore the sight of your eye? And the little girl with a queer smile, she said, yes, pastor, yes, pastor. And the man of God put his hand on top of that cotton wool and said in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I open and see again. Amen. And when he removed his hand, the doctors were coming and said, Pastor, your time is up. You get out. You get out now. And he looked at them queerly like, Okay, I'm going, I'm going out. Then he looked back at the little girl. And then they said, Pastor, please get out. We, this eye is going to be septic quickly. We, get out. We want to work on the eye and remove it because it's, the liquid has come out. So it means it's dead. And then he said, remove the cotton wool. He refused to move out. And then when they peeled off the cotton wool, ladies and gentlemen, you can believe it or not if you don't want. Or you can believe if you want. When they opened when they took off the cotton wool, the little girl was lying on the stretcher, I mean on the on the on the on the on the theater bed, rose and sat up straight, opened her eyes, and she was able to see God Jehovah had restored the dead eye. Pastor, how did it happen? I don't know. Why did God do it? Because the little girl had faith in the man of God. She was too young to know that we must have faith in God, but at least she had faith for a miracle. She had faith for a miracle. She had faith for a miracle. And the eye was restored by God Almighty. Not by the preacher. And the doctor stood there with open mouth. Ah! They looked at each other. They looked at each other. Because when they put the cotton wool, they could see that the, 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 the eye had fallen in to show that there's no liquid there. But now the eye is round again, is able to see scientifically it's impossible. What does the Bible say? It says God wrote special miracles by the hand of Paul. There are special miracles. I'm going to pray. I'm going to pray right now. If you got faith in God, I promise you God is going to confirm the word I was preaching. And the word that I've been preaching to you all these other days. If you can dare believe God for your miracle and not just agree and yet doubt in your heart, but believe without doubting God, Jehovah, is able to perform a miracle. Pastor, are you still preaching that in these last days? Exactly. I'm still preaching that because that is the truth of the word and the word will never change. We humans can change, governments can change, and church people can change, but the word will remain the same. And I choose to remain with the word, still preaching that God is able to perform miracles. Thank God for scientific knowledge, but thank God for God himself. I'm going to pray. 
You can put your faith in God. And as I pray, I'm believing God for a miracle with you. Let's pray together. Daddy, in the name of Jesus, the son of the living God, I stand here as your servant, proclaiming the gospel. There are sick people over there. You see that mama, you see that daddy, you see those, those young people, that grandpa, that granddad, in the mighty name of Jesus. You see those little kids that are suffering from all kinds of attacks, especially for now with this COVID thing ravaging the world. I'm praying in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I say, be healed. I say, receive your miracle right now by faith in God. Amen and amen. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I've done my part. I believe you have done your part. It is God's part. And God cannot fail to do what he promised. We would appreciate it if you can send us a voice note. Please, a voice note just telling us what God did for you today, this special Sunday that we have. I'm believing God that he has done a miracle for you, that at least some of you will believe and believe that you would receive your miracle. God watches over his word to perform it. So if you did receive a miracle, would you send us a voice note to this WhatsApp number, 67 9520-067-865-9520. That's our WhatsApp number. If you can just maybe write a short message if you cannot give a, a voice note. Just, just give us a short message of what God did for you. We want to share it with the world and God will bless you more. You remember what Jesus did after healing that madman at Gadara? He wanted to follow Jesus and join the team. Jesus, no, 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 no. You go to the Decapolis. Go tell them the great thing the Lord did for you. He knew that sharing the, 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 the testimony of what God did would help other people to also receive their miracles. God bless you. I invite you to see you next Sunday. God willing, we'll be taking another thing. Remember, we're talking about God is the source of all things. So today we're sharing about God as the source of healing. We'll be taking another subject next time. God bless you.